we're literally just talking about prioritizing targets is really important um, because if you're just shooting everything all the time well then you're never actually accomplishing anything by the way you can queue up it doesn't look like you're in queue um, and if you're just kind of tickling everything and just shooting everything all all over the place then nothing dies so you really have to focus in on um, a specific character um, on Tracer, a lot of the times you're playing as an opportunist character where you're um, looking and wait, and you're just poking and poking and kind of kind of doing what you're doing and just poking and prodding until you see an opportunity to get a kill where somebody's low, somebody's out of position, you can duel somebody, um, you have pulse bomb, things like that, where you then can swoop in and finish something off. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I got you. And the final question for you is: Do you have any questions for me before we get started? Um. Yeah, actually. Um. So I'm looking. So, how many characters do you think is it good to like know outside of the one that you main? You yeah. know, like for example, I like I recently picked up Junker Queen. She's a lot of fun to play with. Now she can get shut down, right? Mm -hmm. But if you play her the right way and you kind of like poke the corners, you can manage because she, yeah. she does a lot of damage and self healing. And then I also I started playing Lucio. Mm -hmm. It kind of came natural. I win a lot of games with him, but I really like playing Tracer the most. Mm -hmm. So, but I win I win more with Lucio than I will with Tracer. I'll have that happen a lot actually. Yeah. So, it's actually. Just in general, it's best not to try to play every role, because then if you're playing every role, then you're not, like, focusing in on anything, and you just kind of spread yourself too thin. Okay, right now we're really far forward, so you probably don't want to be this close right now. Um, because being that close doesn't actually let your team engage with you. Well, now, now that your team's pushed forwards, you could, but you're also down your tank now. Oh, yeah, so to start off, I probably wouldn't start on that right side. Rather, maybe you could be on like the top left uh, that just offers you a safer position, um, not being as deep inside of them. Because if you're just kind of going in by yourself, um, then you're going to um, just get melted in like by all of them together. Okay. We called a little slow because you actually didn't actually get your health back because you waited past the three seconds. Link away. No, <laughs> I'm so bad. Cover. Good stalling. Recall it to get rid of it. Oh yeah, thank you. See? Mm -hmm. Common sense, right? <laughs> Oh, yes. 
Oh, no, oh. no! I know Diva's right next to me. Yeah. No! I have my pulse bomb stuck to my um my uh L3. Mm. Cause that was completely on accident. Where is she? Huh? skin that's the mythic one right yeah all right um let's go over a couple things before you queue into your next game uh -huh. um all right let me get streaming here one moment mm -hmm. okay. i gotta land those post bombs i have yeah. to land those so let's talk that's how you get the value. Yeah. So let's talk. So we can talk pulse bombs real quick because that was that was one of the things, right? Like out of the three pulse bombs we threw, or three or four, I can't actually remember. But we one of them was a fat finger, but then the others we just missed, right? Um, so when you're throwing your pulse bombs, um, big big thing is not chucking them because when you chuck them from back here it's a lot harder to land because it's a really slow projectile it's really far away it's gonna be a lot harder to do that than it is to be right here on top of somebody and go like that it's a lot easier of a pulse bomb to land when you're like right on top of them so how can you do that um, easily and consistently um, and the big easy way to do this is to blink in. So um, your blink has a range of about 10 meters. It's like more like 8 meters. So if I blink here, look how this puts me kind of right up on top of them. Um, you can even move in a hair more to get to like here. So maybe like 9 meters gets you like right up on top of them. Right? So you blink. You pulse bomb, and then you can blink away, you can recall, you can walk backwards. Um, but that's your basic blink combo with your with your pulse bomb. is blink, pulse, blink out. Um, and that's going to get you a lot closer, which closer will just be more, mean more accurate. Um, or if you're walking up on somebody from behind, just make sure you're getting up on top of them before you're pulse bombing. Um, so rather than just trying to pulse them like, you know, from right here, I'm getting right here, and then pulsing um, on, on them. So, like that kind okay. of thing. Um, getting closer is just going to make it easier. Now, it's hard to execute, but that's going to come with practice. Um, and just be intentional when you're throwing them um, to try to make sure that they're landing and going where you want them to go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's the same exact technique as a blink melee, which... Um, blink melee is going to be like someone's one HP. You can blink in and melee it to kill them. Um, now this is like this is this one I wouldn't worry as much yet because this is more like high level tech. But you can do that to like finish somebody off really quickly. So we can melee to finish, and it's just really consistent, easy damage. 
How do I get that the, the better aim? You've seen the aim, right? Yeah, so um, aim is something there's a lot of factors to. Um, there's going to be practice. There's going to be technique. Um, firstly, let's, we can talk about some crosshair placement. Is that a term that you remember or familiar with? Yeah, like like aiming like with tracer, you aim kind of at their chest if you're if you're up close. Yeah. So if you like aim, at their chest neck area. Yeah. So if you're aiming at their chest, then you do this, and you just get, and you you're gonna be getting, um, just you're not gonna be getting any headshot damage in. Um, the first primary step, I would say more so neck area, but for in general across most characters, you're aiming for heads. Is where you're aiming. Um, now, like like you were saying. Like you can aim for their neck so that like you're not getting all the spread like off of them. But if you're aiming here, then you're getting all your shots on top of them, um, and you want to be getting headshots because headshots melt a lot faster than body shots do. This is body shots, so let's melt, and then this is headshots right here. So we couldn't even one clip them before, but headshots we can de we can one clip. Because headshots across most characters do about two times damage, which is mm -hmm. a lot of extra damage. So crosshair placement, um, just in general as a term, is placing your crosshair in the in the best place possible to land the easiest shots possible. The uh, you know, and it's just using your brain to help your aim. So the first major step to that a lot of times is aiming head level and not down here, not at bodies, because then you're just hitting body shots naturally. If we're walking around the aiming here and there's more adjustment up to head. But if we're aiming here, well then we're just kind of already looking at their heads. Now you can look lower on your head, their head like you said, but still aiming at their head so that you're landing those head shots and getting a lot of extra damage and it's just very easy left to right adjustment rather than up and to the left up and to the right which is a lot m further um, and a lot harder and it also means that um, if you're just kind of doing your thing and you're aiming down here well then you're just naturally hitting body shots let's say you're shooting in the shields or down a corridor into people you're just hitting those body shots but if you're aiming at head level and you're doing all the same stuff now you're just naturally hitting head shots because you're just aiming there Ah, uh, okay, okay. So just I just need to aim a little bit higher. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big first step, and there's also like pre-aiming as well, which is another step to this as well, which is basically aiming where you know people are going to be. So, um, you know, if I know that the bot's right here, I'm going to be lining up my head to the head, so that when I turn this corner, I'm just like already aiming there, rather than yeah. like coming out and doing like a slow pan to the side. I'm like already aiming at them when I'm turning this corner. Um, yeah. And you can also adjust uh, up and down based off of height. So if they're up here, I'm going to adjust up or down depending on the height of, of the opponents. And you just are basically going to be just aiming where you know they're going to be. So aiming, c turning this corner, just already aiming pretty much on top of their head because this is just where you know they're going to be at. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then there's then let's talk about some practice. Um, before you like do comp, do you typically warm up at all? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of warm up do you do? I mean, I come in the practice range and I shoot, and I'll do like a, one of the warm up workshops. Okay. Gotcha. Like what kind of warm up workshop? Like a, a aim trainer. Okay. Gotcha. So aim trainers are pretty good. Um, I wouldn't really recommend doing like a practice range because this isn't a very great environment because the primary purpose of your warm up is to get your your aim your your aim back in the game because it kind of gets rusty really quickly um, and you're trying to get it warmed up per se right you're getting it um, your aim back in the rhythm and you're not really going to do that too great in the practice range just because it's so easy and predictable bots kind of move in straight lines and you can just very easily track them it's very non dynamic um, aim Aim uh, trainer is going to be better because you, uh, it's going to be a lot more like, whoa, ha, 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 whoo, ha, ba, da, right? Um, but in practice yeah. range, they're just standing here or moving in straight lines. So I wouldn't recommend practice range, but aim trainers, yes, are good. Um, and then another thing I would recommend as well on top of aim trainers is you could even do um, game modes against other high aim intensive game modes with other players. Um, you can do. Uh, uh, 
I used to love, they, but I don't think people do very many of these anymore. Like, there's Try Hard Free For All, there's Gun Game, um, No Cooldown that everyone does all the time, there's um, different things like, um, let's see, I mean, 4v4 Nanoblade wouldn't have Tracer in it, but you can do, like, 1v1 Arena, you can do Aim Arena, there's lots of different game modes that... Um, that are good for warm up so you can just do like a death match those are just like good options as well so maybe you can just mix it up and try to do a little bit of each um that's what i typically do is just do you know a little bit of this that a little bit of that um usually do your warm up for about like 10 15 minutes or so um you know kind of just depends on how much you need and then if you're looking to practice you can also use those exact same modes for practice as well so if you, you can do it to warm up at the very beginning of your day but if you want m even more than that um, then just do those same modes just do them um, like in between your like while you're queuing for games do them um, you know maybe do it a little bit more frequently just don't make it the only thing that you're doing um, does that that also makes sense yeah Cool. Any questions on any of that cool. so far? No. No. So, pra cool. practicing aim is going to be like being intentional with it, thinking about your crosshair placement, um, making sure you're aiming where you know people are going to be, and practicing it and warming up. Um, another thing is like, do you, so you say you play every you play every day, yeah. Uh, yeah, since okay. I've been started playing again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then that then that helps as well because it keeps you consistent, um, and if. You know, if you take breaks, that can also um, that'll mess with it a little bit as well. So just keep practicing. You're you're just getting back into the game, so it, it might also take a minute just to get back into aiming. Okay. Okay. Um, really quickly before um before we hop in, let's talk about just general play style because um, sometimes like you notice that you would just push a little far ahead of your team, right? Like your team would be back here and we're like pushing up to here. So make sure you're being in sync with your team, um, which doesn't mean that you're standing inside of them and going with them necessarily because Tracer's kind of a flanker character and doesn't just walk with the team. But it means going in at the same time as your team, right? Where Whereas if you yeah. think back to like first point of defense, uh, or first, uh, the first time you were just like, while your whole team is back at choke, you were like all the way up here. Which just means that all of them can turn and look at you and not really have to worry about your team because your team hasn't engaged them yet. And they and your team was behind the choke, so they didn't even need to force the engagement. So they could all just turn and look at you and shoot you and then you die. Um, but if you're engaging at the same time as your team, well then they're distracting over there, while we're distracting over here, and now only some of them can look at you, and you're also now providing a crossfire effect where now they're kind of split in different directions, where some of them are looking up there, some of them are looking over here, they're distracted, they're not all going to be looking in the right spot, um, and it's just going to be beneficial for you. Um, whereas if you're the only, if you're going in by yourself, well, then they all just look at you and and you take all the pressure and all the abilities and whatnot. Um, so that's one thing. You just make sure you're syncing up with your team. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, another thing is just general play style. Is like um, maybe try to be on their side a bit more because a lot of times um, you can end up kind of going st walking straight at people, right? And when you walk straight at somebody like this then they're also looking back at you. So on their screen, they see the exact same thing. They're just looking straight at your head. So they can do this and melt you just as fast as you can melt them, right? Um, right. Whereas if you're on the side of them, well, now they're not looking at you. So they, to look at you, have to go like this and move over to the side to look at you, which takes a lot more adjustment, which means that you're not you're taking less damage and, and less pressure, um, which is why you want to abuse this in, in like a 1v1 duel. You can even blink to their blind spots. So um, if, they're, if the bot's coming towards me, I'm going to blink behind them. Right, so I'm going to blink this way and turn around. So now they're not looking at me. And then they turn around again. And now I'm blinking the other way. So just staying behind them or to the sides of them. And you're blinking into the blind spots where now you're looking at them and they're not looking at you. Or at least you're making it harder for them to look at you. 
Um, got you. So that's okay. A, that's that's cool, actually. No, okay, mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's in so, a dual scenario, right? Um, do that, but then just yeah. even in general, look to play on the sides, play on the flanks, play on the off angle, right? So if your team's over there, play over here. Um, do some pokey poke poke, right? Try to maybe focus something down, but you can shoot at some multiple things. And like I said, you're playing as an opportunistic character. So you're not immediately going, do, 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 jumping straight into their team. Yeah, you're not doing that all the time. You're playing on the side, looking for your moment to strike, and then oh, you have Pulse Bomb. Now you can blink in and get on top of somebody, right? Or, oh, you see somebody who's low HP. Blink, blink, and then you're blinking out. Um, right, so you're, you're looking for those opportunities, but while you are looking for those opportunities you're going to play on their side rather than in the front where you're just so- where you'll soak up all of the extra damage um and you're pretty squishy as tracer so you don't want to soak up all that damage right okay that makes sense as a general play style yeah, yeah. all right cool why don't you queue up for a game um and then we can go over some more stuff okay cool cool um and then what time do you have to go because you said you you had to be somewhere, but then also we did start like a couple minutes late, so we could probably do to like two twenty. Two twenty, okay. And then, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. So then we can do. Oh, did my mic cut out? Hello. No, I can hear you. Okay, cool. I I when I tab back into Overwatch, it was um, frozen. You can queue up, by the way. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll probably have time for maybe two more. Yep. Um. And then we can also do like um, last um, ten ish or a little bit less. We can just we can also do like a wrap up review as well. Um, so I'll we need to start that around two ten ish. So okay. I'm thinking probably like one more and like and then we'll probably have a few things to talk about after your next game. Okay. Cool. Yep. So this game. Um, I mean, like, the th- it seems like the three main things we were talking about was, like, aim head level, um, make sure that you're not, you know, jumping in all by yourself, and then staying on their sides and on the flanks, on the off angles. Off angles is, like, any different, is a, no, off angles versus flanks are different. Um, flanks are long and more dangerous and they go around. Off angles are just like the short little, like you go off to the side for like a couple seconds, but it gets you on a different angle where you can just a lot of times jump straight to their back line. Um, and you're not, because you're not on the front, you're not taking all that damage on the front as well. Okay. I want to play as Lucio as well. Is that okay? Or should okay. I just stay as Um, trade? If you want, just note that um, you know, like, we probably only have this game for that. Um, so, let's see. It's, a, it's up to you. It's not going to... What do you think makes more sense? I'm just, um, it doesn't matter. I can just play yeah, since, since we only got, like, like, we only got, like, 17 more minutes, like, of actual review, might be good to just to stay on, stick on Tracer, because it'd be just a short, short little thing on Lucio. Okay. If you want to go over Lucio in the future, we could go over Lucio, in, like, you know, in another session. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Let's send a message. Okay. Watch focusing the tank unless they're low and out of position. That's that's good. Ah, I tried to recall. <laughs> yep, so, um, watch, like, going into the fight, starting and focusing on the tank, because, like, there were, the like, rather than the diva, you could have focused, like, the soldier and Torbjorn on the high ground. Um, obviously watch the recall when you died there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens to me all the time where I try and press it. I feel like I beat the, you know what I mean, but yep. they, I still die, but I'm just not quick enough sometimes. Oh, they're back there, okay. Yep. 
Maybe try scouting it out a hair more before you're like jumping into the fray, because then, because you, there you were like jumping in while you were looking for people, rather than like finding someone and then jumping in. Oh my goodness. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Ooh. Dude, really I should have never went in that room with that far. That was kind of risky. Yeah. No, I didn't mean to. Okay, watch where your team's at right now. Yeah, we're pushing pretty far ahead of them all. Oh, thanks, man. See. Cool. Okay. Oh my goodness, my awareness right now. I'm panicking. It's okay. Yeah. Right. So pick. Rather than just like kind of standing in the middle, glancing everywhere. Yep. Maybe we can talk about a little bit of target priority after this game's done. Supports aren't looking oh. at you. A really good thing to press is I need healing as well um, to get them to pay attention to you. That's a good thing to have bound. Come on, man. Good melee. I didn't need the recall. I didn't know she was gonna heal me. Oh my goodness. Yep. Now I'm not an expert with, with controller settings, like controller sensitivities and whatnot, because I'm a PC player, but it looks like you may have too high of one, because every time you do try to make any small adjustment, you make massive adjustments. So I should probably turn it down? Yeah, you can... Um, Try maybe you can try going in the practice range and messing around with it and put and try thinking of lowering it. Um, like I said, I'm not a controller expert, so you could see what other people like on YouTube say about pro about like good um, controller settings, uh, joystick settings. But um, it does look like when you're looking around, anytime you're trying to aim at somebody, it's very choppy and. Uh, um, sharp. They're like very sharp adjustments. Keep your eyes and your ears open. There's like a Kiriko shooting right next to you for like five minutes. <laughs> oh my god, do you see why I'm in bronze? <laughs> yep, so you can go over sound, sound awareness as well. The enemy 
You know what? You're right. I'm tripping because I haven't used up any of the stuff we just talked about. We just talked about high ground. Okay. Yep. Yep. I thought about the pulse bomb, but then I realized she would fade out. Yep. So it's something else to pay attention to as well is like their cooldowns um, and what they have. Yeah, I did that one to myself. Okay. Oh man. Not even a dent in my armor. I wasn't patient enough. I should have waited. If you pulse bomb her mech when she's coming out of it, it'll kill her. Watch their health bars when you're trying to melee them because um, a lot of times you're meleeing when they're like uh, not low enough for it. Because a lot of times if you're meleeing, you want it to be your like finishing blow. Because otherwise, it's not just it's not worth it for the damage. If it's your, if it's the finishing blow, then it's worth it um, because then you're saving ammo. You might not have ammo, but if it's not going to finish them, then you're, it's not usually worth meleeing. Um, and you're meleeing that so melee does for uh, for reference if I'm remembering the stat correctly because they didn't change it at one point um, it does 40 damage um, it used to be 30 I think it's 40 now um, and uh, you're meleeing people when they're at like 70 right and it's just not quite low enough um, let me stream then we'll go over oh, some okay. Some. Did you not want me to queue back up? Um, no, because we'll talk about a couple things, and then we'll go into the wrap-up review from there. So, okay. we'll, well, we'll talk first be, before we get to that. So, yeah, make sure they're lower. Like, you're, you're trying to melee when they're, like, here, which just means that you have to you know, do a double melee. Um, then, besides that... <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, app, let, we'll talk about application in a second, but let's talk about awareness real quick. So there are times, like, where you're, like, where, I mean, there, during that game, you had, if you want to, you can look at the replay, but you had Kiriko, like, right here on you, and she was shooting shots, like, right past your head, and that was go. and then you also, like, when you went to blink to grab the health pack, you, like, turned and saw her and blinked past her, grabbed it, came back around and she was like still next to you and that went off, that was prob probably about like 20 seconds right where she was next to you and you didn't notice her and then and that's going to be awareness right of kn knowing what's going on around you um and that's going to be audio awareness and visual awareness audio awareness a couple things real quick um sound settings um is you can one make sure that your master volume is loud enough that's subjective for everybody but just make sure it's it's high enough to where you can actually hear things um then next make sure music volume i would just recommend not having on max either have it down or off so it's not cluttering your audio um then i would recommend having play sound when teammate and enemies are eliminated that's just like an a audio version of kill feed um, and then also, um, if your headset doesn't have surround sound, um, then I would probably recommend getting one that does have it. Um, like if you don't, or if you have software that allows you to have it and get that. Um, I don't know about console that, cause I know they didn't for a while, but I don't know if they, if you have the yeah. spatial audio, um, one, but there's Dolby Atmos for he headphones, which is like the in-game version. <laughs> of surround sound, but I don't know if console has that. They didn't use to. Um, 
and those are all so that's gonna that would be helpful if you if you don't have surround sound getting surround sound but ultimately um just like with visual awareness audio awareness is going to come down to are you actually paying attention to what's going on right are you listening to the footsteps and gunshots and abilities and ultimates are you paying attention um visual awareness like there's a few like tips and tricks with it like make sure that you're looking around more frequently right don't just walk around doing slow pans everywhere um, but like walk around looking this way and that way and this way and that way right like turning when you're turning corners like checking the left room checking the right side checking the left side right like looking around a lot um, that can help but then also just like awareness is going to be like actually just pay attention to what's going on and how you focus and work on your awareness um, is going to be the same way that you work on anything else and that uh, they, that I'm telling you to work on, and that's just going to be that you want to make sure that you're actively focusing on the thing that you're trying to work on, um, which means that you're not going to come into um, your game and just turn to autopilot mode where you're just going and doing the thing and just doing it. <laughs> kind of like what you're saying. You were like, man, I, I'm not even working on any of the things we were talking about. Um, and yeah, I, went into, I, I definitely mm -hmm. did. I went straight into autopilot mm -hmm. mode. Yep, and if, you're, exactly what happened. and if you're going into autopilot mode, then you're not actually working on anything. You're just like playing to play, and then you're not going to actually improve because you're not focusing on anything. But um, when you come into your game, you want to pick something out, um, and then you want to think about it and focus on it. So, for example, if we're trying to focus on awareness, I would think awareness, 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 awareness. Look around, look around. Watch kill feed, kill feed, kill feed, kill feed. Um, 360s, do them, right? Like things like that where you're constantly giving yourself that reminder. And when you give yourself that constant stream of reminders, then it just becomes a lot more natural. You'll, you'll develop it um, to be a natural habit. And then once it develops into that habit, then you don't need to focus on it as much because then that just is a habit. And then you move on to the next thing to work on. And that's your cycle of improvement. Um, and also, like, another thing in that is just don't try to do everything all at once because maybe something there that got overwhelming is like, oh, I said focus on mechanics and your positioning and um, I can't remember what the other thing I said was and, like, your play style and, like, it's just a lot of things. So instead, focus on one category of things or one to three smaller things within that category. So just don't overwhelm yourself by focusing on everything all at the same time. But pick something out, get good at it, and then move on to the next thing to work on. Um, okay. And like, and, and am I playing too aggressively? Um, sometimes. Not all the time. Um, aggression is just something that you need to like learn how to manage. Of like, This is the time to play aggressive. This is not the time to play aggressive. There's some times where you're pushing in and playing too aggressive when primarily like it would be like times where you don't have your teammates um, when you shouldn't be. And then there's other times where um, where you're playing perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so sometimes you're playing too aggressive, not all the time. Um, okay, okay. Cool. I would definitely say you're not usually playing under aggressive. Um, okay. Does that make sense and or any question do you have any questions on any of the application stuff? Yeah, so um Okay, yeah, cool. So I need to take high ground or work on my work on my aim. How about the um the blink control? Yeah, um I think that it's okay sometimes. Um I mean like it's not perfect. I don't think for the mo I mean like at the very beginning of your first game, it was bad where you're like blinking into walls and things like that. So just be careful you're not blinking into walls. But besides that, you you kind of um, smoothed it out a bit more, and it wasn't as bad after that. I don't think that it's a massive point of note for the moment. Um, so I wouldn't sweat it too much, um, and you can just keep getting better at that as you go. I don't think it was the main point of the session. Um, okay. so far. Um, another thing that we can talk about really quick is um, more positioning um, of where should you be standing. Because we talked about standing off on the sides, but you also want to make sure that you're standing using cover as well. Um, general, Good general positioning is, I mean, like if you're standing right here and you're shooting at people and do da 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 and then they all start shooting at you and you're trying to like run away because you don't want to take all that damage. Um, 
it's going to take you right, like uh, resources to get over here. Or if you don't have blinks, right now you're walking a couple seconds to get behind the corner here. Whereas instead, if you're already behind a, a wall in a corner, you, you can't be shot, you can't shoot through solid objects, so you're completely safe. And now it takes you like half a second to get behind the cover if they start shooting at you. Um, so, therefore, good positioning is the usage of cover, whereas bad positioning is the absence of cover. The further away you stray from it, the worse off you're going to be. And the great thing is that covers all over the place, right? You have um, slopes and pillars and corners that you can hide behind, random uh, side objects, uh, when people are looking at you, shooting at you when you're reloading, and they're all over the place. Corner, corner, doorway, corner, doorway. High ground also acts as natural cover as well. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not like standing on the open. Whereas um, too often you were just like standing in the middle of the fight. Like you would be like right here. And then that is going to be part of what's overwhelming as well. Is when you have to do this to see the entire fight. Then there's people like all around you. You don't know where to turn and where who to look at. Um... And then that's overwhelming when you're in the middle of it, and you're gonna be taking more damage, and you're not, and you're gonna be um, just like, yeah, you're not gonna know what to shoot at. It's gonna be overwhelming. You're gonna be taking too much damage. Whereas once again, like if you're off on the side using cover, using cover, right, like this, then mm -hmm. you narrow it down. And look, now all of them are on your screen where you're looking, right? Standing off on the side rather than the middle means that you're not overwhelming yourself as much with where people are. Um, and using cover will help reduce the damage that you're taking. Make okay, sense? so also take better angles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, cover while being on the sides, right? like we were saying before. Whereas, like in your last game, you kind of still went and stood in the middle of the fight. Okay. Um, so all of that, those reasons, is that probably like is that why I'm probably still in bronze? It gets really frustrating, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, like, and I know I can't blame my teammates because you mm -hmm. can get on YouTube and watch somebody roll an entire lobby, you know what I mean, with yeah. somebody who's not even that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I know it's a skill issue. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, like, it's, I mean, like, all these are different factors. I mean, there's probably even more that we didn't have time to discuss, but um, if you work on these and either, like, you know, completely fix one of them or just work on all of them, then, yeah, I, I think that you could definitely rank up off of, like, just fixing on and improving the things that we've been talking about. Um, applying the different techniques and looking to fix your mistakes and things like that. If you, like, mastered one of them, you could probably rank up off of that. If Or, like I said, if you just improve it, all of them, then you'll probably you could probably rank up off of that as well. Okay, so it's an awareness. I need to, it's better awareness. Take knowing which angles to take, knowing the um, where to take the high grounds, and you know what I mean. Because the same angles that you show me on the side, sometimes there's a high ground yeah. where it's I can take the just, same angle. Just on the make high sure they're not too far away, as well, because you want to remember your range. Because Tracer doesn't have very much range. I'm not doing anything from back here. Not even doing very much from here either. You're not really doing too much until you're getting a lot closer. Tracer definitely does have a preference range where she prefers to be up at like 10 meters. So where she can one clip somebody. Um, so just make sure you're not going too far away. And high grounds can be really good and be beneficial. Just make sure you're not like constantly sitting here from people because then you're not doing anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, high guns were really good, but also that wasn't even like a focus per se. It was more so cover, cover and side angles. Um, high guns definitely can be good to close the distance on people, right? Like I can drop in and do that and get out and be over here, right? So high guns can act as cover and they can act as ways to get in to people, but don't always constantly sit on them if they're not going to be in the right range for you. Okay. Uh, let's do a quick wrap up review and main points um, ability usage um, I mean like there was like here and there blink and recalls like recall but I think you knew when you were you were you were like oh dang I should have recalled there um, and blinks so like there'd be sometimes where we'd like blink into a wall or blink too much I don't 
we can go over that maybe more on a different date. I don't think that was the pr main primary issue. Um, there are a lot more bigger issues than those. Um, than blink management. I don't, yeah, I don't, I think it was good that you're using them, and I don't think that they're horrible, um, but there is progress to be made on them. Um, overall, it's like a, you know, for the current moment, a low to medium priority for you to work on. Um, just watch recalling when it's needed and blinking into walls and things like that. Um, pulse bomb usage, we talked about making sure you're being intentional and blink, blink in and get on top of people. Um, so that you're getting in that range. And I think you did a tiny bit better with it in the last game, but still room to work on it. Um, and overall that one was more like a medium priority for you to work on. Then mechanics. Mechanics. Um, aim head level. Aim where people are gonna, where you know people are gonna be. Um, practice it. Um, be intentional with it. Um, and then also uh, target priority, right? Don't um, constantly swap targets um, and come in. We didn't get to go super in depth on target priority. Maybe we can in the future, but um, don't come in like staring at the tank. Go for those squishies in the back. Um, and all of that was also like a medium, maybe like a higher end of a medium. Um, and then Next comes your um, positioning. Positioning. Um, make sure that you're using cover. Make sure you're standing off on the sides. Make sure you're not diving into the middle of their team. Um, make sure you're not overextending. I guess I'll put this into because we didn't really talk about aggression fully. So I'll put overextension into the positioning category rather than the aggression category. But just make sure you're not like going in without your team, right? Like, bit, watch where they're at and stay, stay, um, make sure you're not going too far forwards when your teammates aren't with you, because there are a lot of times where you just go in by yourself. Um, overall, positioning was, like, a medium-high priority for you to work on. Just, like, not being in the middle of them, standing off to the sides, and, uh, um, not going in without your team, with, without your team, um, made it pretty high. And then, final awareness, awareness, pay attention to audio awareness and visual awareness, pay attention to where is your team at. That was, if you're focusing on ev anything, that's probably the biggest thing to focus on. Where is my team? Where is the enemy team? Where's my team? Where's the enemy team? And keeping tabs on where everyone's at. Right? Um, but there's also other things to pay attention to as well. Um, overall, that was like a higher end of a medium. So to put that all in order, number one probably was your um, positioning, then awareness, because that that kind of combos in with what we we're talking about with positioning as well. Where right? you can kind of just put those together and like focusing on where's my team, where's their team, right? And then that will help you not overextend. Um, that that was a big big one that kind of combos with both of those. Um, and then net third comes your mechanics. Fourth comes ult usage, and then fifth, right? Like, still some stings, but really the lowest was the abilities for now. Um, okay, does crouching, does that help, like, at all? Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it crouching? can help. So, it can help you throw off shot. Now, I know it's more difficult to do on console, so if it, I um, know that sometimes, like, it's hard to do, like, crouch spams on console, but crouching can help throw off shots on you but you don't want to spam it and too fast and you don't want to never do it but yeah once in a while it's good to mix in just for um to m throw off your movement but um i know it's harder okay. to do on console as well yeah because i'm learning it right now i just bound it to my um because you know tracer's blink on console it has two buttons Mm. Your 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 yep. your left trigger, your left trigger is um is blink, and then your left bumper is also blink. So I made my left bumper uh crouch, and then my, I kept my left trigger as um as blink, and then I put my pulse bomb on my move stick because mm -hmm. I found that I I kept having like troubles hitting the, the button in time. Sometimes I'd blink in, or you know what I mean? Because you've seen how I play. So I'd play, mm -hmm. I'd be out of position, I'd try and blink in, and I'd get, I'd get melted before I could get the pulse bomb off. Yeah. But I would still, so I just bound it to, to that button so it'd be quicker. Yeah. 
I got you. Cool. Um, any final questions before we wrap up? No, that's it. Um, for the most part, I'm going to work on that. So next time, I'll be a higher rank. <laughs> Sounds a higher good. Rank with That'll be cool. I'm going to work on the positioning thing. I think that's going to be the big thing that I focus is like the off angles mm -hmm. in the positioning. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I hope it goes well. Um, let me... Yeah. I,